Hi, I'm Tim and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be talking Grandstream GDMS.cloud. Now, a few of my viewers have posted comments on my channel, which they kindly did, saying that they couldn't adopt their access points, so their Grandstream access points, properly into the GDMS.cloud system. Well, I tried the same thing, so I've tried to replicate it and it did actually adopt the devices. However, my viewers have had the same problem as I did, whereas the Grandstream access points are always showing as offline. Now, I tried various methods of adopting it. I tried changing settings, various things such as making the access point a slave instead of a master, but that didn't seem to work. I tried changing various other things and also trying various different settings in there. Now, the only solution I found is to factory reset your access point and then you're able to adopt it. And it also shows as correctly being online when you then adopt it into the new Grandstream GDMS.cloud. Now, this seems to have happened since Grandstream have updated their GDMS cloud, which I've noticed recently that there's been a lot of additions, changes applied, and also some fixes as well, probably some bug fixes. But I couldn't find specifically anything in the updated notes saying that you need to factory reset your access point. So this could also have happened with other devices as well. But in this video, we're gonna hop onto the screen behind me and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to factory reset your Grandstream access point so that you can then adopt it into the gdms.cloud, which used to be called GWN Manager or gwn.cloud. It's now all together as gdms.cloud, which manages your networking hardware such as switches, routers, access points. So we'll hop onto the screen behind me now and I'll show you how to factory reset your access point and then we'll go ahead and adopt it so that it correctly shows us online into the gdms.cloud system. So we'll get to it right now. So as you'll see, here we are, and I'm at the computer screen, and what I've done is logged in to the GDMS networking here. You'll see that, as I've mentioned in the intro to this video, that GWN Cloud has now merged into GDMS networking and also GDMS Unified Communications. Now the Unified Communications is for your Grandstream PBX devices, telephones and so on. Whereas GDMS networking is to manage your access points, switches, routers and so on. So if you haven't already gone into GDMS networking, just hover over this and select GDMS networking and it will take you into this screen here where you will find your GDMS networking dashboard. Now you will see that we've got an access point here. Now it's showing as access point and there's one access point and it's showing as offline. Now this is the issue where as it always shows as offline and will not move to online. Whether you go into, for example, devices at the left side here, it will sh still show as a gray dot against it being offline. Now it doesn't matter if you refresh your web page, for example here by clicking the refresh button in the browser, it will always show as offline. Now the only way to resolve this, as I've found, I've done various different tests and different methods, and the only solution I have found so far is to go back into your access point. So go back into it locally, this is, and you should get to the following screen similar to this, where you've got the GWN and the model number of your access point. In this case, it's a 7665, and you'll be in the overview tab here. Now, the only way to resolve this is to factory reset your access point, and it will then automatically show as online in the GDMS networking or GWN Online Manager. So this is the cloud version, by the way, I'm talking about here. So to reset your access point, you go back to the overview screen, and then at the bottom, you will see we've got maintenance, which is under the system tab. Now, if system is closed, then just click on it to open it, and then select maintenance. Then what you need to do is in the maintenance screen, you'll see we've got various options here, upgrade, 
allow DHCP and you'll see further down here we've got a reboot button and a factory reset button. Now what you need to do is click factory reset so select the reset button and then with the pop-up window that appears on the screen click OK but just bear in mind when you do this it will erase all your SSIDs and your wireless access point settings channels and so on so it will factory reset the access point to all the default settings now if you obviously have a lot of access points then it's going to take time to get them all adopted and set up in the GDMS networking cloud but if you want your devices managed by the cloud so gdms.cloud then this is the only solution I found at the moment so what you need to do is click OK and then it will say resetting here with the spinning circle. Now the device is resetting, you may re-log in by clicking on the link below two minutes after reboot. So we'll just wait five minutes and then I'll be back to this video in five minutes. I'll give it five minutes rather than two just to give it time to settle down. So I'll be back to this video then. So now that we've reset the access point and we're back to the login prompt as you'll see, if you don't see the login prompt, all you need to do is click re-logging or refresh the web page. Now at the login prompt here, we're not going to log into the access point, but if you see below the sign in button here, we've got a message saying the AP is paired. Now this now means that it's correctly adopted itself into the GDMS networking, so gdms.cloud. So if we go to the other tab in the web browser, we're still in the gdms.cloud system. Now what we need to do is refresh the web page or go back to the dashboard. So let's go back to the dashboard by clicking dashboard at the left side. And you will now see that the access point is showing as one access point being online. So it's now online. So what we can also do at the left side is to confirm this by clicking devices and you will now see that we've got a green dot against the access point saying that it's online. So now that it's showing us online what we'll do is go in and set up the access point from scratch again. So to do this from the left side click settings if it's not already open and then what you need to do is go down to system and click system. Then in the general tab that appears on screen in the center make sure your country and region is set correctly. So this is United Kingdom, correct. And the scenes is either indoor or outdoor. This is indoor. Also the time zone, make sure that that's correct. And then for the LED section, I like to turn my LED off instead of having it illuminated in the house. So I'll turn this to always off. And then when we've done that, all you need to do is click save and it says save successfully at the top. So then what we need to do is go in and set up our SSIDs, so the wireless station names and access credentials. So to do this in the settings menu again, select Wi-Fi. Then at the top, you'll see we've got Wi-Fi and wireless LAN. So what we need to do is click add for wireless LAN. And then what we're going to do is create the wireless SSIDs. So the wireless network names and associated details. So what you need to do for the Wi-Fi tab, make sure that this is enabled. Otherwise the SSID won't be showing up for your devices to connect to. So under name, we'll call this GWN7665. And then for the client IP assignment, we'll leave that as bridge, which is default. And then in this case, I've got different VLANs. So if you want to allocate any clients that connect to GWN7665 wireless network to a specific VLAN, then select associated VLAN and enter the VLAN. In this case, it will be VLAN 5. However, if you don't have VLANs, then leave the associated VLAN disabled. Then for the SSID band, you'll see we've got 2.4 gigahertz and 5. However, I just want 5 gigahertz for this wireless network. So we'll untick 2.4 as you'll see I've done. And all we've got now is SSID band 5 gigahertz. Then what you need to do is click on access security to bring the settings 
in there, open, and you'll see we've got security type personal. So what we're going to do is leave that as personal and the WPA passphrase. So we'll put in the wireless network password and for the WPA mode, we'll select this to WPA2 stroke WPA3. Then under device assignment, click this and it should bring up the device assignment. So if you have more than one access point, it will show up a list of access points that you want to apply this wireless network to. So as you can see, I've only got one, so it's already ticked. So what you need to do if you've got more than one is tick the access points that you want to apply this wireless network to. So once you've done that and tick the devices, then what you can do is click on save at the bottom. Then this has created our first wireless network with the network name GWN7665, as you can see, and the status is enabled. What we're going to do is add one more wireless network. So I'll just do this quickly. Tick Wi-Fi to enable it. Give it a name. In this case, GWN7665-2. Then for the SSID band, I'm just going to have this as 2.4 gigahertz. So I'm setting up basically two wireless networks, one in the 5G band and one in the 2.4 gigahertz band. So then click Access Security, enter the WPA passphrase. So this is the wireless network password to access the wireless network with. Select the WPA mode to WPA2 or 3. Select Device Assignment make sure that the access point or access points are ticked and then click save. And that's created our two wireless networks, as you can see. So then what we're going to do is now that we've set up the wireless networks, so we've got two here, GWN7665-2 and GWN7665 for the five gigahertz and two is the 2.4 gigahertz. So now I like to set the access points to specific channels. Instead of using the automatic channel allocation feature, I like to put my access points into specific channels. So to do this, what we need to do is go to devices in the left side. Then you will see we've got the access point. So under operation, click gear, and this will take you into the configuration for this specific access point. So under the 2.4G section, what we're going to do is set the channel width to 20 megahertz. Now, of course, you can select anything you like. You can select 20, 40 or 40, whichever you choose. And then what we're going to do is for the channel, we're going to set it to a specific channel. In this case, I'm going to use channel nine. However, you can pick whichever channel you think is suitable or if you've already done a wireless network scan using some software or a device, then you want to pick the channel that is least used by your neighboring access point. So any other properties or buildings near you, you want to try and pick a channel that is not already in use. So for the radio power, you'll see we've got use radio settings. So what we'll do for this is set it to medium as I don't need the high power for the radio in the access point. So I tend to just set mine to medium so that the signal is not broadcast too strongly and too far. So once you've done that, then you can go down to the five gigahertz section. And in that, for the Wi-Fi 5 compatible mode, leave that as use radio settings. And the channel width, we'll set this this time to 40 megahertz. And for the channel, we'll go ahead and pick channel 140 for 140. And again, put the radio power to medium and then scroll down to the bottom and click save. Then what you can do is go back to the dashboard at the top. So click dashboard here at the left side and you'll see your access point is still showing as online. And then if you go to clients at the left hand side, so select clients and then from the dashboard, you'll see we've got one access point as still online, which is good. However, you might need to wait about five or 10 minutes for the access point to properly provision the channels and do a DFS wireless scan if that is needed, of course. Now this can take between five and 10 minutes after applying the settings for the access point to become back online and allow your clients to be able to connect to the wireless network. Now to check that your clients are connected, what you need to do is click on clients at the left hand side, 
and here this will bring up a list of clients and what I've done is refresh the web page using the refresh button here at the top and you'll now see that we've got a client appeared. So this is my mobile phone, which is now logged in to the wireless network, which is the 2.4 gigahertz band. We've now set up the access point into the GDMS system, successfully adopted it by factory resetting the access point. Now, as I've said, this is the only solution that I've currently found that is the method that I've found that is the way to do it by resetting your access point to factory default and then it can be added as you will see and as I've shown you into the gdms.cloud system. Now if anyone knows of another way how to do it then please do leave a comment in this video as it will be most helpful to other channel viewers and also subscribers of my channel and of course don't forget if you want to become a subscriber just hit that subscribe button it is free. So I hope you found this video useful, especially to the ones that's made a comment on the channel already about adding devices and the access points. So hopefully this video is useful to you. And if anyone knows specifically of why the system has changed, then please do again, leave a comment. Now, the only thing I can suggest is why Grandstream have done this is to probably have the access points that's already been adopted into say your own local network so that they cannot be taken over for example and adopted into someone else's GDMS system or their local Grandstream network controller. So that's the only thing I can think of why Grandstream have changed it so that it enhances security by if it's already been adopted then you can't actually change it and move it into another system without factory resetting it to the factory defaults. So that's the only reason why I could think of. And it, if you think of it logically, it is actually a good solution because then nobody can sort of take over your network devices if they've already been adopted by yourself into your own systems. So the only way to do it is to factory reset it by accessing the device, of course, locally and doing a factory reset that way. Anyway, hope you liked this video. Hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching and more videos coming soon. Bye for now.